Good morning, everybody. It's the third Sunday of Ordinary Time, and as the, the snow comes down here in Houghton, uh, just uh, some uh, words of reflection uh, to share about our readings this Sunday. Um, our gospel is uh, just at the very beginning of uh, the gospel of Mark still. We're still in the first chapter. Jesus has begun his public ministry, and we come in many ways to the core of his message. Uh, this is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Uh, Jesus is inviting us to respond uh, to this invitation. Uh, he's announcing uh, his, um, his ministry, his mission. Uh, these words, I think, are oftentimes uh, fairly familiar to us. We hear them in multiple readings, multiple liturgies during the course of the year. But there's always the danger that they would become, uh, you know, kind of too familiar, and then we wouldn't allow them to kind of ring out with their uh, uh, intended impact. Um, and in particular, I just think like that word gospel, repent and believe in the gospel. What does the word gospel mean? Um, what is this, uh, this thing that we're uh, invited to embrace, uh, to repent and believe in the gospel? The word gospel is uh, derived from uh, older forms of English, and it just simply means good news, and it's a translation of the Greek word from the New Testament, euangelion, sometimes translated into Latin as evangelion. Uh, it means good news. It means glad tidings. So if we put that in there instead, we have the kingdom of God is at hand, uh, repent and believe in the good news, in these glad tidings. Um, and that news is, is Jesus himself. Uh, it's his life, death, and resurrection, the Paschal mystery, his rising from the dead. Um, it's this kingdom of God, uh, which he's proclaiming, this fulfillment of all of God's promises. One thing that's notable of this is the urgency with which Jesus proclaims it and the urgency with, with, with which people respond. So just in the next verses, we see Jesus calling Simon and Andrew and James and John. And all four of these men uh, walk away from their livelihoods. They walk away from their ordinary lives. Um, uh, very poignantly, James and John walk away from their father, uh, Zebedee, who it seems is there as they're called, and he's there as they leave. Uh, so Jesus' call is something which um, rightly evokes, rightly elicits uh, this, this immediate, this kind of urgent response. We say this same immediacy in our other readings. Jonah uh, comes to Nineveh. Nineveh is under God's judgment. Uh, Jonah is not particularly um, uh, tender towards the Ninevites. He's uh, rather eager, it seems, perhaps, for the city to be destroyed. But as he announces God's judgment, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed, um, the whole people of Nineveh, Nineveh repent. Uh, they uh, enter into a fast, uh, put on sackcloth and ashes, and, and the Lord um, uh, repents, as it were. The Lord turns away uh, from this judgment. Uh, their repentance brings the fruit of reconciliation with God. Uh, so there's that immediate response even th that Jonah didn't expect. And again, in our second reading, St. Paul speaks with the same urgency. Uh, time is running out, he says. The world in its present form is passing away. Brothers and sisters, I think it's, it's very possible for those of us who are practicing the faith, seeking to live as Christians, as Catholics, to nonetheless lose this urgency, lose this sense of the immediacy of the gospel. I think it's easy for the gospel to, instead of being kind of at the center of our lives, the Lord Jesus himself, our Lord and King, our best friend, our intimate companion at every moment, uh, instead, for the gospel to kind of become kind of, uh, you know, kind of put it on the shelf, um, all kind of on the edge of our lives, or maybe a part of our lives, or, 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 or a piece, a module within our lives, rather than the center and the heart of our lives. And so I think it's, it's, it's valuable for us to kind of examine our lives, to examine our hearts, and say, Lord, are you really at the center? Am I responding to you, uh, going after you with this urgency, with this immediacy? Um, there's a need to place the Lord uh, at the center of our lives, to allow him to be the very center of our lives so this uh, this transformation of us personally can occur and, and through us this transformation of the whole world. Um, putting Jesus at the center is hard and uh, certainly we live in a world where Jesus is not at the center, right? Um, and Jesus hasn't been at the center, you know, for a very long time if he ever was kind of in the sense of the world. Um, you know, I, I think something for me in terms of reading a little bit of intellectual history and thinking about the, 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 the trajectory of that, um, it seems to me that, you know, by the late 1800s, um, the, at least the, the kind of the, the, the educated elite, right, had long since stopped worshiping God and his kingdom, um, but they were really setting their hearts on progress, right? Uh, railroads and telegraphs and um, steamships, right? Uh, man's ability to perfect man, the, the rapid increase of the industrial economy. Um, and all of that hope that our technology would save us shipwrecked on the tragedy of, of two world wars, World War I and World War II. Uh, it became apparent that our technology... 
uh, really had the potential simply to increase our effectiveness at destroying each other and destroying ourselves, uh, even more so with the advent of nuclear weapons, right? So by 1950, um, whatever uh, you know, reasonable hope that technological progress was going to save us seems to have shipwrecked. And, and it begat, I think, a lot of despair. And it begat uh, maybe the world we live in now, where although perhaps some people trust in technology, most people seem to be worshiping pleasure and comfort and uh, the naked will, right? Uh, the absence of any limitations, right? To, uh, to consume, to acquire, to have, to experience um, anything I want without boundaries or limits. Um, and, and so uh, it's no small thing for us to, to live embedded in this culture, as we're called to as Catholics, as Christians, uh, to live in the midst of this, and yet not to be drawn after these false gods, uh, but to really uh, turn to Jesus and to allow his teaching, his life, his death, his resurrection, his power uh, to save and transform to be the very center. Uh, so, so there's this call from the gospel uh, to reevaluate, uh, to look within, uh, to ask the Lord, Lord, show me um, how you want to more thoroughly transform my life. Um, my words, my actions, my relationships, all these things. Uh, brothers and sisters, I hope that you uh, were able to go to Mass today and that you could approach the Eucharist. Um, if you have received the Eucharist, uh, to allow the, the burning power of the Lord's body, blood, soul, and divinity to transform your heart. Um, uh, everything in this world is passing away, brothers and sisters. Every political party, every political leader, our economy, all of our possessions, all of the things that we might acquire, all of these things will pass away, but the Lord uh, will not pass away. Um, the, the, the people uh, who we love are all people destined to eternal life. Uh, if they will but say yes to God's grace, as we are, um, uh, we are called if we but say yes to God's grace. Um, and so all these, these systems and nations, all of these things are, are not necessarily evil, uh, but they're not that which lasts. The Lord uh, is the source, the center, uh, our, our origin and our destination, uh, if we will but say yes to his will. And so in light of that, let's uh, ask the Lord to show us um, on this Sunday, um, and especially by the gift of the Eucharist, if we could receive him in the Eucharist, or by the gift of a spiritual communion, if we can't, let's ask the Lord to, to equip us, to empower us, to heal us, to nourish us, such that we might uh, follow him with urgency, uh, place him at the center of our lives, and allow him to transform um, everything uh, in us, everything we do, everything we say, everything we think. Uh, know of my prayers for you. Please pray for me. God bless.